can you imagine it now? You've got a life, you're settled, you're happy, you're comfortable. Then to be told that actually you've got 90 days to get out. Must be so hard. Must be so difficult to just up and leave everything that you've built behind and go to a different country that you may or may not know. In 72, Idi Amin gave the Asians not 90 days to leave the country. And so people left with 90 days. They left with nothing. Friday, I announced the decision of my government to ask the British government to take over responsibility for the British citizens of Asian origin living in Uganda who were sabotaging the economy of this country. The story, again, from my understanding, is that Leicester City Council took out an advert in the Uganda newspaper, the Uganda Argus, and asked them not to come, asked the Asians not to come to Leicester because they wouldn't be able, they couldn't cope. They didn't have the infrastructure. So of course everybody had heard of Leicester and it almost backfired on the city. And over 4,000, I believe, actually came here. So the largest, one of the largest groups of Asians arrived here in Leicester because they'd heard of it. I was only two when we came to this country. So I was a baby. I don't remember any of it, unfortunately, but all the things I've learned from talking to various different people, including my own family, you know, are, is the knowledge that I have. I think a lot of people know the, the basic story, the basic history of what happened in, in Uganda and how the Asians were kicked out, but it's, it's those individual, those really personal stories, I think, that will have the most impact. It's great me saying, well, in the news today, this happened, but unless you actually hear from those people that were part of it, unless you hear those really personal stories who took that journey, who walked that walk, you're never really going to understand what it feels like. And we really want to tell the stories, I think, of the, the, and hear the voices of, of the people that we haven't heard from before. You know, the people that have struggled, those, um, the women behind the men, the successful men, you know. But what's really important, I think, is that those conversations continue now with the, the, the third and fourth generation, you know, Ugandan Asians and within their own families, but also at schools in, in, in Leicester and make it part of a, a, a legacy so that people are aware of what happened and why it happened and how much it's changed families, individuals, but also the city, and how big a part they've played here now, you know, in the last 50 years.